these hard drives aren't going to fill themselves. Where are they? <laughs> You've got problems. Memory leak. Greetings and welcome to Die Dragon Die presents the Titan's Gift. Season 4, Episode 9. After a, sh after a, uh, a hiatus. How's everyone doing on this fine Tuesday? Good to see you folks. Woo! Good. Our schedule is finally aligned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mostly. Long enough. Yeah, mostly. Um, how goes? Haven't seen you guys in a while. <clears throat> pretty good. Going pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. A lot. I feel like a lot has happened. I, I don't even know. With so much, so many games were played and discarded, and so many life lessons learned and forgotten so many beards grown <laughs> yeah so many beards grown trims looking very you got your, your beard games on point there uh, uh luke thank you i thought i would join the uh beard club here that's why we uh didn't have neil on tonight it's beards only <laughs> <laughs> well welcome up a beard Ooh, oh, oh. Hey. Beard, the beard boat. Oh, <laughs> I don't know that that uh, works. I think that's just weird. Yeah, okay. Yep. It's just beard. Okay, so well, be beard and fun. beard and lots of games. Uh, what have you played since Christmas that you enjoyed? Uh, Baldur's Gate Three was awesome. Yep. I had to stop playing in the third act because it was just a job and it was stopped being fun at that point. Fucked around playing some just stupid games after that where you just run a tavern and try and make gold coins from that. That was fun for a hot minute. Uh, we've got the urge to just play a Final Fantasy game. So I've been playing Final Fantasy 15, which is uh, it's so lovingly crafted and just, just stupid enjoyable. There's just so many just stupid little choices with music and mechanics that i just put just puts a smile on my face i've done too many side quests so i'm starting to hate it because it's just fetching things uh but man i really like their approach on that one it's it's a super old game but uh i mean i played final fantasy 8 way back in the day and loved it as a wee lad so i was like yeah let's see what they're doing these days you know cool i'm start starting to think that Maybe they're not serious about the final part. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Definitely not. No, that's a bit of a misnomer. It's like like any trilogy or any movie title where it's like final in the title. You know, there's gonna be one more after that. Yeah. They're lying. It's always one. <laughs> they're lying. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, Res life Resident is, Evil. Life I'm looking good. at you. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, life is good. Just hanging out, trying to survive. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Trying to remember how to play these D and D characters, I'll tell you that. Yep. Oh lord, there's a lot of text on those character sheets now. Fourteenth uh, and twelfth level characters, yeah, they're pretty pretty dense in this system. <laughs> Matt, what have you been up to? Not not a ton. We went we went to Iceland. Uh, well, that's for, a thing. For about six days. That's that's for sure a thing. That was pretty recent. I can't I can't necessarily remember anything for the previous few months. Yep. Yeah, wasn't out the year and all that stuff at work, so. Um, but yeah, no, Iceland was amazing. Iceland in the winter is um, cold and really beautiful. Uh, really, really pretty. Uh, yeah, how are the northern really lights, beautiful. man? That's the big draw, right? It And we actually saw it. So we were there for six days. We did a driving uh, tour uh, out away from the city to see some sights during the day and hopefully see northern lights at night because we were kind of out in the country. But the it was always... Isn't it all night right now? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's about seven hours of daylight. It actually oh, didn't okay. as impressive as I thought it would. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we did, uh, uh, but it was it was always cloudy or there was no aurora activity. Uh, mm -hmm. On the last night, we were back in Reykjavik, and it was forecast to have some activity, and northwest of Reykjavik was forecast to be clear, so we drove out of the city and found <laughs> sort of a... A uh, parking lot inside of a park, and uh, uh, looked uh, up. <laughs> yeah, we were there for like twenty minutes, and there they were. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It was cool. That's sweet. That's so cool. We're trying to we're trying to do that as well. Yeah, actually, like right now we're hitting a solar maximum 
uh, it's supposed to like peak like now until next year or whatever. And then we nice. wean back towards the solar minimums. <clears throat> I read pattern recognition by William Gibson over the, over the break too. Over the break. I don't know. I don't know that one. It was, it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Um, I haven't, I haven't read a Gibson book in a while. And, um, uh, you know, I, I really like the sprawl trilogy neuromancer. Uh, so oh, yeah. he wrote Neuromancer. That's like one of the classics. I've never read it, but that's whenever you look at like greatest sci-fi of all time. I I recommend like not everyone gets into it, and that's okay, you know. But uh, uh, boy, I I really liked it, and and despite kind of how old it is, I feel yeah. like it still holds up. Like his, his vision is a bit dystopian, um, yeah. uh, but but. Uh, he did a good job of kind of predicting aspects of the future. And I, I really, I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Real cool. I've got it. Next time you're over, if you're ever over, we'll pull it off the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> I might be there soon. There's talks, talks is of a party happening. Max. Let's do with you, boss. Uh, yeah, I changed jobs. Uh, Whoa, so fun. Really? Um, yeah, I, uh, thanks. Um, it was really tough, because uh, I really liked what I was doing before, but I got like one of those once-in-a-lifetime opportunities where someone shows up and says, like, hey, do you want to do this thing? And you're like, well, shit, yes, I guess. Um, <laughs> so I started that in January. It's been a blast. Uh, really enjoying it. On the game side, let's see here. I played Nobody Saves the World. That one was pretty fun. Um, I just finished my... I went back to Cyberpunk. I threw another like 50 hours into Phantom Liberty. Um, I hadn't played the expansion, and so that was pretty fun. I'm trying to remember what else we did. I don't remember. Oh, did I don't know if we talked about Ragnarok since the last time. Um, but yeah, God of War Ragnarok was amazing. Ooh, nice. I put a bunch of time into that. Um, yeah, not, not too much else. It's, it's been relatively quiet here. So, good break. New gig. It's been pretty fun. Nice. New job's good. It's hard, oh, hard to get. Do, do, do you, you see this thing over here, Luke? I haven't put it up yet. What is this? Oh, is this Magic the Gathering cards? Oh. I've been playing a lot of Magic, though. Dude, yeah. So I over, over New Year's, we went and visited, oh, my God, Stormlight Archive? Yeah. Uh, did, you, did you see the Kickstarter? Uh, I'm pretty sure. I backed some of this Kickstarter. I spent way too much money on the Kickstarter for the Stormlight. Is this just the specific one for the like figures that they were doing? That's the big statue, but yeah, yeah, it was for all the figures and stuff. Yeah, that's freaking sweet, dude. Yeah, so that one came in. I haven't put it up yet. I'm thinking about redoing a lot of this stuff. Like, I think I'm going to take out the Overwatch ones over there, maybe put Lilith on the bottom, and then do like Kaladin and Zeth on like the two layer levels above and split them up. Um, yes. But yeah, I haven't I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do with statues. But I know my my office needs a refresh. Just berate the Kaladin statue whenever whenever you walk by it, so you can just reinforce all of this. Tell it that it's awful. Yeah, you know, give it depression. Nobody will yeah, ever sure. love you, Kaladin. Everyone you ever loved yeah. is dead. <laughs> Matt, I don't remember. Do you play magic at all, or are you in my camp of like nerds? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I played a lot of magic when I was younger. Oh, okay. I have a different set of the dark. <clears throat> which is not worth an enormous amount but okay. um Ooh. I, was like, I sort of i was i was playing during beta uh or no during unlimited um and uh during what was the first uh, arabian nights oh um, they bad. Yeah, they I, don't like to talk about a lot of those cards because of the racism <laughs> well there yeah yeah but, uh, yeah and i i've been playing since back then but it's been quite a while since i've since i've actually played around in magic i i I will say that, like on days where we don't, we haven't been playing on Tuesdays. I started going to our LGS and playing Commander Knights. So if we don't play on Tuesday, I just go over and play Commander on Wednesdays. There was a card yeah. game that in high school that we played because it was closer to D and D than Magic. We played Spellfire. <laughs> I'm, yeah, pretty, yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure I have Spellfire cards at my at my house. And what yeah, look mean? at that. <laughs> what it is? Yep. Maybe a darkness spell. Oh, cool. <laughs> My buddy, uh. my buddy Matt, or my buddy Dan, 
Uh, he got me a whole box of Spellfire cards for Christmas with That's instructions. That's hilarious that you have them in your hand as we're talking about this <laughs> random game that was not as popular as Magic, no, obviously. No. It's very easy to buy every Spellfire yep. card that ever was printed for, like, not a lot of money. Yeah, yep. I, get, I still got to put a couple decks together. Dan, I'll, my buddy I'll, Dan to, I'll have to dig them out. Uh, for me, yeah. since we've played last, um, I finished my project management professional certification so one down two to go nice. um, right, what else? Um, this is like in case you get laid off how do you get past the first filter when there's hundreds of people applying to a job um, what else uh, I've been watching uh, the crap TV I've been watching has been swamp people <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay it's Alec Louisiana and alligator hunters. <laughs> I know swamp people. It goes on in the background while I'm doing other things, and it's bizarre and wonderful all at the same time. That's um, beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful that that's your background show right now. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> not not to sit down and you're like I'm gonna watch Game of See Thrones or something like that. Next. You know, like yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just on in the background, and you you watch their <laughs> their crazy shenanigans. With with the great accents, um, yeah, oh yeah, that Creole accent, the Creole right? accent. Every once in a while, there's a French word where it's like, "Hey, I know what that means." <laughs> um, it is so hard to do that Creole accent. It's like, man, I don't know how they do it. Well, it's the way they speak. <laughs> no, but like people who do accents oh, yeah, really good. Sure. That's such a hard one to yeah, get. Into. It is one. Mark's got a character in another game where he's doing the Creole accent, and it's uh, it's pretty funny. And he's he's doing it. He's nailing it. He's getting it pretty close. Nice. All right. I yep. dig that. Yep. Okay. Why don't we do a recap of what happened last game? Neil might be able to join us tonight. Depends. He's having sort of a, a family emergency thing going on. So if not, he will join next time. Uh, season four. Last episode... night we got out of the dream. I think. Or yeah, the it, dream it, it... was ending. <clears throat> uh, last game was called Toad All Recall. Um, oh yeah i forgot about the toad. along the forest road the jerks are attacked by the beast of Avaron. the jerks conjure a refuge while visiting the city of zymes examining the captured artifacts they return to mother of toads whose form whose true form is revealed the mother of toads leads a risky ritual to escape the dream realm and mm -hmm. the group Along with these strange globes that in this particular, in reality, uh, manifest as lanterns with lights inside of them, um, and the Mother of Toads all appear and begin to start to rouse at the House of the Moon. However, some are quicker to rouse than others. Uh, we pan out from the House of the Moon and into the uh, into the desert terrain surrounding the house itself. Flint. A, twi a twice-born Orid warrior has traveled quite some distance uh, to arrive at the House of the Moon. As you crest over a ridge, finally, you think that that structure yeah you can see lights and maybe people moving around is the place where you were told to go having left your kingdom in of underhome having left your pearl and traveling by way of the veins of air um, a passage between underhome and Vostera, um, your caravan had set had set out from uh, the lands of the maharaja of the radiant court um, to find heroes. Much has not gone well in Underhome as of late. With the, Majra, with the Maharaja lying on his deathbed and what you suspect the corruption of the opalescence of the Crystalline Temple, which is like the holy site of your people, um, there has been a distinct and heavy rise of um, the Obsidarans, the cult of Obsidian, and um, you believe that there are machinations afoot 
to completely undermine Underhome. Not having the strength, uncovering some of these uh, machinations were yourself and some of the monks of your temple. Um, they served not only the Radiant Court, but also guarded the opalescence of the Crystalline Temple, which is both a person as well as a mm, entity. The temple is? The temple is, yeah. Um, like an energy. Um, the high the high priestess of the Crystalline Temple is also is called the Opalescence, but it's it's much more than that. If the Opalescence becomes corrupted, it will not be Azimar. It will not be holy and angelic powers that will be born of the twice born ceremony, but something fell and perhaps something much worse. You, some of your masters um, died mysteriously. Some were sent on strange um, conquests against people that were not historically your enemy. And um, the, the, the Radiant Court currently has very strange emissaries some of which from the sovereignty that seem to be quite friendly towards, how shall we say, these corrupting forces. What few monks that were not corrupted or that um, were informed enough to act and kind of see the whole picture formed a caravan to leave Underhome and search for heroes that you've heard that have been stymieing a similar sort of corruption and um, um, perhaps change for the worst for the peoples of the Great Wheel uh, that has happened inside of uh, Grand Station. You, you, like news of yeah. uh, the young queen's killing of... Um, of the sovereign and taking over and horrible plagues that coincided uh, with that takeover and whispers of being in league with witches and, and fell forces. Um, you would have expected the Maharaja to uh, rebuff any nonsense that came that way, but instead, instead it seemed to have been invited in. On your way out, through the veins of air, which is a dangerous and treacherous route of formerly mined veins of valuable metal that actually breach the, the two pearls and act as a secret passage between them, um, is when you came across something dark and terrible, uh, a beast of legend. Um, do, what? skills do you have i make rocks do you have any <laughs> knowledges monk skills um yeah i have knowledge of engineering um okay i also have not a little bit of knowledge of religion but that's about it okay uh give me a knowledge religion role and a knowledge um dungeoneering role yeah i can do My dice got closed somehow, for God's sake. It is... Oh, I don't have to slash roll. Uh, you said religion and then dungeoneering? Mm hmm So, this one is religion. Engineering. Not great. I don't know a lot of stuff. What was the total? Oh. <laughs> uh, 17 for religion. Uh, oh. Did I? This uh, is a check on no, the secret no, tunnel. No spaces. So you roll the 17 and you add four. So you got a 21. And on your got other it. roll, you okay. got a 14. 
Got it. Okay. Um, whatever it was that you fought was not an aberration. <laughs> and then the religion but roll. I punched it with rocks. You are very suspicious with the um, type of magic that the black and sh the black scaled and shadowy dragon whose lair you came across on your way out of the vents. Uh, this dragon and perhaps some King of its... King just subscribed for 46 months. New Rockman, W-H-O dis... <laughs> just getting the, uh, the notification <laughs> in the ear. <laughs> Apparently I've got some British dude announcing the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> announcing the subscribes. <laughs> uh, wow, man. Cool. Um, Sorry for the distraction. <laughs> the the shadowy black scaled dragon was very stealthy. Um, you didn't realize that you'd wandered into his cavern. Um, you had rested that night, and you were the only one you and I guess a small familiar that you carry uh, that were able to escape. You're the only one that knows of the machinations and that has seen into um, the crystalline the crystalline chambers where uh, your race is infused the chosen of your race are infused with holy energy you being twice born you you have gone through that ceremony um, not every one of the sardonics guard has not everyone in the radiant court has um, you're the only one that you know that has survived, that has seen the corruption of this place and that the shadowy, purple-eyed um, uh, newly chosen of a different type of energy are now being produced. You suspect with your 21 on knowledge religion that the dragon's powers, you saw his breath steal life in a negative energy sort of way from those that it breathed on. <laughs> um, you suspect that that dragon has something to do with the uh, cult of um, the cult of obsidian. Wandering your way through Bostera, how are your social skills? Do you have diplomacy or... I'm very good at intimidating. Okay, so <laughs> whenever you've come across and had the he's, rare he's a little opportunity, abrasive. Yeah. yeah. Um, the rare opportunity to speak to some of the cat folk that live in Bostera, uh, out in the wildlands, they have pointed you into the right direction. Um, you had to almost throttle a a junk collector to get the right directions to the House of the Moon. Uh, he he seemed very shifty and not wanting to give an outsider um like clear directions to one of their holy places uh but you were, you managed to get it out of them uh you've wandered for many days uh sometimes not in the right direction to arrive at this particular spot finally you're convinced that this really ancient looking temple um not quite you're guessing not quite bastani there's something about it that just screams older um, more sacred and the Bastani you've come across have lived in like desert hovels uh, not quite not quite a big stone edifice that is the house of the moon with its, its large dome at the top um, curiously you see two people flying quickly out of the house of the moon uh, this is even before you get within uh, within talking distance of of any of its guards or uh, residents, and I'm going to flash two tokens. Yeah, who is get flying past here? Uh, I need. Oh, that's what I was doing. I'm gonna find his token. Uh, I'm missing one of them. first one is wearing robes and has a very long face. He looks younger. 
Hmm. Is he a humanoid or some kind of... Yeah, he's a human. Okay. And the other one... Half-elf? Is he have pointy ears at all? Uh, no, this is... this is a, It looks like a human. Um, he's got wizardly looking things on him. And he's riding on the back... Like, both of them are riding on the back of a broom... But the broom, um, uh, the clean-faced human is the one not piloting. Like he's he's holding on and mm -hmm. and uh, riding riding along. The one that is piloting the broom looks like this. Map tools is just caching, so <laughs> of course it is. <clears throat> See some random, random writer from the early twentieth century in black and white on the field there. <laughs> I'll just call him Strange Wizard. They, like a bat out of hell, are flying up and away and clearly out the front entrance of the House of the Moon. You do see at this point in time a couple of guards, like, like looking like they weren't expecting this. And they go flying off into the sky, uh, seemingly into the depths of the desert. Not quite in the direction you came from, although... I'm not too sure how good of a survival list you are. I've survived. Okay. Yeah, they. I know where North is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they they're heading into the into like the deep of the desert. You're pretty sure nothing's out there, like at least from what you, from your from what your wanderings is, has shown. Just tiny, 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 tiny rocks. Just. Billions of them. Uh, how do you approach? Inferior rocks. Directly. Okay. You are stopped by two guards. Uh, they look like they're on edge, as perhaps these two men that left uh, the House of the Moon um, startled them in some way. Looming near the entranceway is a massive... Um, uh, Rakastan. <sighs> he snorts a bit and uh, they speak in Bastani to each other. Uh, there is a much grayer haired, <laughs> smiling, uh, much smaller gray haired, smiling, older. Um, um, might be Rakastan, might be Bastani, Catman, uh, that also comes out. And they seem to be looking at the sky more so than like worried about you. I try and look up to the sky where they're looking. Yeah, they, they, they are definitely looking in the direction of where the where the two men on the broom, the black the the black short um, uh, bristled broom, it had a weird crook in it, almost like it was meant more so for sitting on and riding in this manner than cleaning. Um, yeah, they're they're now a dot in the uh, uh, in the evening sky. Watch this. Greetings. I come looking for adventurers on a conquest of great importance. Is, is it a conquer us? No, no, no. I, I, I think he means quest. Yes, a quest of great importance. He said he was going to conquer us. What? No, no. I, I come looking for adventurers. Ah. Uh. Um, is there any... Wait a second, you're... You're an Orid, aren't you? I look down on my feet. Yes. Uh, far from home, I see. Quite far. 
chased away by a, we'll call it a great dragon. Ooh. And I look up this cat dude up and down. Maybe I've come to the wrong place. I'm looking for strong adventurers. Uh, can you, you tell me where I might be able to find them? You actually know... <laughs> <laughs> you you know their names you've heard of these jerks oh, okay. that have been fighting uh like a guerrilla <laughs> warfare against the queen and perhaps oh, okay. perhaps the enemy of um uh, what would it be it would be so like uh, rumors have gone around and stuff about some of the stuff uh yeah you started asking you came to bostera to see if there was any help that could be found and amongst the the Bastani, you've and and the Vark, you've um, you've heard about the jerks. Apparently, they got swallowed by some um, massive worm and survived. Yeah, I, I come seeking the adventurers who survived the great worm. <laughs> I think he's come to the right place. Uh, yes, uh, the smaller one looks a little more nervous. He's looking back over his shoulder. A little uncertain. Is the dragon on its way here? It didn't follow you through the desert, did it? I look back. Not that I can see. No, during the battle and your <laughs> incessant rock throwing, the way uh, there was an avalanche that separated you from the dragon and probably saved you from the dragon's claws and breath. Um, unfortunately, you're not too sure if that way of getting back to Underhome is viable. I suspect it thought me dead. Oh. oh all, all right. Um, it's rather dusty out here. Perhaps we should go in... I look um, down at like my rock-covered body. Is that a choke? <laughs> no. Uh, he, he looks distracted again. Both of them are now looking over your shoulder. Well, Grojan's <laughs> looking past you. Uh, the truth speaker, Akram, is looking up. And I don't know if you turn around. Yeah, I, I keep looking where they're looking. Yeah, okay. Uh, you can see that way out in the desert, kind of where those two men flew to, there's a massive black cyclone that's forming. Like a, oh, like, like a big... Um, normally the dust devils aren't quite big, that big. It's also very dark. There's something... I think we should... Um, there is now, close by, a keening, like a very, very loud, uh, almost animal, maybe an angry spirit, something that uh, is yelling its displeasure through the, uh, uh, through the winds. This seems to unnerve Truth Speaker uh, and Crojan, and they're, they're backing away now into the temple. Um, Akram's waving you in. I assume you mean no harm to these people? Yeah, absolutely not. Okay. He's not even wielding any weapons. Yep. Well, we know better than that in fantasy world. <laughs> <laughs> Just moving, these guns. Moving for a moment into the uh, sanctuary of the House of the Moon. Um, Darshan. You yes. Have, you have been in a a horrible place for a long time. You know that your that two of your companions have been near. Occasionally, you have been able able to talk to them while you've been trapped in this listless sleep uh, perforated every once in a while by probing nightmares and strange dreams um, right now you are on a warm stone floor uh, you've just spilled out of something and you can kind of feel under the, the crunch of one of your legs like the broken glass of what looks like um, a, a broken lantern <laughs> Uh, the two companions you know that have been near to you have been Avery and Gracchus, although you don't see them. 
you do see another smashed lantern. The fourth person that has been in this state as you um, would have you would consider him the antithesis to your light. Ah, maybe not even the right description. Where you are light and life, it is almost like he is the complete lack of anything inside. Like a ah. deep, dark void that is that has no pit. You know that there's a very intelligent man that is behind that emptiness, but... Whenever your tormentors brought the two of you close together, there was a reaction. Okay. One that threatened to fill his void and one that threatened to snuff your light out. Nice. Nice. Okay. You and never... the, the light, that's the light of the, the gem of Pesh that's in me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, spilling yeah. out from this container, uh, I guess for the benefit of people who don't know who Darshan is, i.e. the stream, and, um, there is a, uh, a beige-haired Bastani, uh, in white robes with a bunch of adventuring gear. There seems to be a, a, a light of life that is in his eyes and that emanates, um, every once in a while from, from his chest. The Bastani immediately start helping you to your to your feet. Uh, ah. Thank you. Who? We are free. Darshan is free. The blessings of Baishi Pei be upon you all. Does this does this house follow Baishi Pei's sight? Uh, Baishi Pei is known to us, says Moon Maiden Tekrakai. I'm the head priestess here, the head priestess of Iambulus, the Dreaming Titan. Iambulus, yes. Mm, mm. You notice... I should pay upon you all. Thank you so much. You must tell us how we have come out. You notice that there's a bunch of people that are passed out and that they have vines growing into their ears. The vines seem to be sprouting the these lotus flowers. And you can't help but notice that the vines all are coming from this tiny, um, like, is Darshan a bard? I forget. Darshan is, uh, an oracle sorcerer. An or, uh, okay. Yeah. A sorcerer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oracle, uh, void sorcerer. Darshan, amongst the people Dar that are here... Is the long lost king of Heshmala, Zephyrus the <laughs> First. Oh yes. 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 He, oh he my seemed, god, he did it. <laughs> he seems to be wrapped up. Also, he has vines growing into his ear. You notice that there are several vines that are <laughs> flapping that may have had somebody attached to it. And you can see these horrible dead worms, like worm bits that there's this one priestess or an underling that is kind of like trying to carefully scoop up into a jar. Okay, yeah. Uh, and yeah. it looks it looks like a bunch of black putrescence and maybe like filth. Like whoever was part of this ceremony that was lying in that spot peed themselves and you're a healer of great, of great power. Uh, you sense that whoever that was, they were diseased and likely cursed. And, you know, like you, you see something bad <laughs> happened here. <laughs> Who could have that been? You, you know? also <laughs> notice that whether it's important or, yeah, it's a sign. The closest lantern, the lantern that is separated from the three, where you know your two other friends are inside, yeah. uh, was was smashed. And you could see almost like color around this area had been, like, taken yeah. Like the explosion was not, or like it, it smashed and it was only a smashing. It was almost like essence around the lantern got absorbed by something. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the only people that are awake, these people all seem to be healthy and, and are uh, sleeping. Um, were you in a dream? Was I? There were nightmares. 
Nightmare's trying to invade. Maybe Darshan was dreaming. We were thrown from the pearl, cast out, and then sucked into some prison. Are you saying that there are others in these other two lanterns? Yes, yes. They Either. were they were uh, they were crack. brought they were brought back by these great heroes when they entered the deep dream. The king of Heshmala himself came to save us. We are in his debt. She she kind of nodded slowly. Yes, I forgot we are in the presence of royalty. Mm. I'm sure he is most humble. Please, see if you can free your friends. And uh, one of these moon dancers comes over to like help you. They seem very uncertain as to what these lanterns are. And she turns for a moment to tend. Uh, they seem really uncertain about this woman. I do not know who she is. Perhaps we should restrain her. Yes, it, it, it may keep her from running away. I see that one of the one of the ones that was dreaming here, dreaming are they? Uh, was was badly afflicted. The uh, man the man didn't stay long. He he shared some words with one of the heroes. The empty one here. Uh, how was he freed? Uh, I dropped the lantern, says one of the moon dancers. Uh, <laughs> a strange feeling, I'm sure. It was, was... It was heavily cracked. Uh, uh. Yes, we wanted to see what was... There is a light inside you, the moon dancer says. Yes. We yeah. will have time to speak of this... And she notices something, like maybe some spell or alarm or something was going off, and and she uh, she actually um, excuses herself for a moment. And how was Darshan freed? Darshan was in this land, yes? We cracked you on purpose, that's what she says. <laughs> well And she hands you this like Darshan? this little this little like pick. <laughs> this one was cracked too, and, and they came out. Uh, it worked well for Darshan. Let us crack these others. Yes. Okay. Let's take a look. Darshan, it doesn't take you long to figure out which one's which. You can hear the howling of wolves from one, and you can hear Avery. They did something to Avery. You can hear his yelling torment and the constant barrage of spellcasting coming from the other. Oh. So. Yes. We will free the wolfman first. Uh, this is Gracchus. He is a great hero. Uh, uh, come. I will tap, 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 and uh, uh, get a crack going, and then um, yep. uh, let him out. Spilling yeah. out first like a um, uh, like a like a cloud that that spills forth, forth at your feet. Eventually it forms into that of uh, Oh, Gracchus is very furry. Oh. Uh, yeah, I think immediately Gracchus is going to let loose one of these. And he is going to immediately reach for his longbow. Okay. He still has it. Um, yeah, you have, you have your gear. I will pull out my bow and I will quiver whatever arrow runs to his hand first. And I will scan the room pointing at... Uh, oops, sorry. First, the closest thing, then the most threatening thing, then the thing I think I can kill in the Close, first shot. Closest thing is your friend Darshan? Uh, I'll immediately skip over Darshan. <laughs> okay. I'm going to recognize and go to, like, the most threatening thing in the room. Cat people or sleeping giant things? I'll glance over the sleeping giant things and then start pointing at the living cat, the cat folk that are awake. There's a sleeping... You're a warrior. There's a sleeping bear... That has like bear man. You're not too sure what they're called. Yeah. Um, that has seen many battles, many scars. Like rugged, rugged looking. He's he's the he's the most dangerous physical thing in the room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Settle down, pup. No, I you guys are all sleeping. Nobody's here to hurt you. You guys are sleeping. No, uh, 
the Ori it's still there. Oh, okay. Flint's like uh, in the doorway, yeah? Uh, remember, this Working place this, this place okay. was um, like an extra dimensional space inside. Oh, the, uh, got it. Yeah, okay. so you don't you see a priestess approaching and things are gonna. They have not hurt. They have not hurt Darshan. They 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 have freed us. The ones with the the uh the big ones there. I think that they had come to free us. This one, he is the king of Heshmala. I'll keep my arrow drawn, but I'll let the tip of the arrow like dip so it's not directly pointing at, okay. at anyone. At all. <laughs> the the Bastani cat folk. It smells weird in here, Gracchus. You know, dogs and cats and that sort of thing. Uh, they've got their hands up. Um, they're deferring to Darshan to calm this. Are you injured? One of them says. He has Are seen many injured? terrible things. We have been trapped there for, for many, many moons. How long, Darshan? How long? I don't know. I don't know. Is she still alive? Are Where are they? Um, this is Heshmala, yes? You have, you have saved us from there? No? They look confused at uh, at Heshmala. One of them actually turns and looks at Zephyros. Um, uh, that's when the two of you actually see. You didn't recognize her because she's wearing um, priestly garments and that of an oracle. Oh yeah, Where but you could you could room? see sleeping at the base of the uh, uh, the base of the statue, uh, Ezri. You have brought. Oh, you have our good friend Ezri here. Ezri has gone with the king of Heshmala. Excellent. Ezri is... Ezri was brave and entered the dream ahead to scout to try to find her friends. Are you the friends that she is... that she has braved the deep dreaming? Uh, as the cat folk stepped forward, I'll pull my bow back out and say, where are we? You are in... Where is this? You are in the House of the Moon in Bostera. I can control it! You can hear Avery yell. We must, we must bring our friend Avery out. He has suffered greatly. He may need, uh, he may need attention. He may need healing. Okay. How, how close are we to the crossroads? I don't know. They, there's just a bunch of confused looks. This must be beyond it, for I have not heard of, I have not heard of Bas, uh, Bastera. Yeah, one of them said Bastera, the other one said House of the Moon, and... To them, that seemed like that was enough information to answer the question of where are we. Askrin, where is the Pearl of Askrin? They, they mess up the name you just said like they've never heard it before. They're like feeling it in their own mouths. We've never heard of such a place. I will let the... Do not worry, the, the King of Heshmala will awaken soon. I'll let the bowstring slack in and fall to my knees, looking dejected, eyes going unfocused. They're gone. All of them are gone. It could have been you, Starship. It they could, could all be it. dead now. Dead in bones. For they centuries. They may not be bones, though. They may be, they may be, uh, they may be still there. They may carry on the fight. There's a flash of light from inside the lantern where Avery is. Here. Let us tap. We must, we must let Avery out. Uh, be prepared. He is a powerful wizard. Uh, he casts, you may know the spell, Fireball. Does anyone here know Fireball? <laughs> All of Neil's characters <laughs> know Fireball. You know, to this, uh, to this pearl. Uh, yes. Uh, so I will uh, tap, 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 and get a crack going in yep. this. Yep. There is a, th what looks out. like a single magic missile flying around on the inside of the lantern. We'll hold for just a second before we... <laughs> okay, it's just flying around like a like a firefly. Uh, e e stand back. I'll, I'll crack it open. Okay. Um, the magic missile disappears, like escapes violently from the... <laughs> from the lantern the lantern's broken and it's now flying around the room madly <laughs> people are ducking it one of one of the uh, one of the moon dancers goes and and tries to cover Ezri when when it flies near her uh, I'm trying to see if I've got a a shield 
I do. I will cast shield and dive in front of it. Okay, you cast shield. It's almost like the magic missile um, knew that you cast it. He goes flying right into your shield. Avery ends up turning from the magic missile into a person. And he kind of also hit the shield like with his face and he goes tumbling to the ground. Arcane spell failure chance. I cast second shield. <laughs> Then... <laughs> and then it worked. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Uh, okay, so yeah. it was on the second casting of the shield that he. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I have this really finicky uh, headset that I can't record. No, okay. All right. Yeah, a Avery went face first into your shield. Apparently, he was the magic missile. Oh. And now he's on the ground. Oh. Oh. You are safe. You are safe. We are free. The the cat folk nearby tries to help him to his feet. He 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 flinches, but he doesn't stop from receiving the help. In fact. He seems most startled by Gracchus. <laughs> oh. It's Gracchus. Uh, he has grown a lot of a lot of fur during our during our captivity. Avery, we're lost. We have no idea how long we've been in there. I've been casting Avery spells. Spells. Avery. Yes. Myself, I can cast it. Me, I learned my formula. He, he's, what? he's speaking nonsense, maybe? Darsha, Avery sounds like he requires more healing. Something's wrong with his brain. We have a place for you to rest while the others rouse from their slumber. They yes. seem to be interested in kind of coaxing you out of here they, they don't know who you are um this place looks pretty special from the perspective of a religious person uh i i i'll i'm kind of dejected and will probably follow darshan seems to be the one with the most of their senses together he'll probably like sort of automatically follow wherever darshan goes but as he's spacing out i will check inside me for the connection to my god. Uh yes, you you have you have slept a very long sleep long enough for you to have prayed to your god to receive spells like you have powers. Um in fact, you have a full allotment of powers and the powers would be geared towards you fighting and doing what you do best. Yes. But okay. So, but my god hasn't died at least or anything in the intervening years. The bond is still there. Unless the last time you prepared your spells was the last time that Pesh and Lin um, gave you those powers, then they would still be inside you. Wait, what, what, what do you mean by that? A god giving you your powers for the day yeah. is investing yeah. the powers in you. If something happened to the god, well then... Okay, those... yeah, that's kind of my question. Okay, so I, I don't know for sure. Maybe a, a full 24 hours I'll be able to know. Avery is the one that needs the most help. He He's acting like he's been in like a sick bed for a long time, is super shaky, and, and you're just kind of leading him around. Uh, one of the moon dancers does channel positive energy, not to the not to the degree that Darshan can, but, you know, heals some of any of the scrapes and things that um, uh, that you've received. As you're being... Um, escorted out uh, you do get the sense that you're leaving an extra dimensional space uh, you end up in a very similar space without the dreamers, without the statue uh, and are being kind of escorted to um, to a place to rest when uh, the moon maiden comes back to you and immediately a guard comes running up to the moon maiden saying something bad is happening outside always something bad hmm uh, and you can hear the keening. What is it? Do I recognize it using my fantastic hunter abilities? Uh, 
No, it doesn't sound happy, and it may not be alive. Yeah, okay, it doesn't sound like an animal, then? It... No, no, this is not an animal. Okay. Uh, any knowledge religion that might give a, give a hint as to what we're dealing with here? Yes. Thirty-one? Tormented souls. It is souls. Souls that have suffered greatly. You can see that there's a massive um, um, uh, Rakastan uh, and several other Bastani standing at the doorway. They There's a rock guy that's glowing slightly. <laughs> Uh, and they seem to be very perturbed at the at the keening noises. Is there a roof to this place? I'll turn to the one yep. Bastani that's leading. Yeah, us the, now. the moon the moon maiden's there. I will take your sick friend. I will go and try to rouse the the heroes. <laughs> Not knowing Quit who before though, point me to the highest vantage. Where? Out and up. I'll growl at it. Okay, they they Both take. We they, slept long enough, Darshan. They're willing to take Avery off your hands, or are you going to keep Avery close to your side? No, so put put him in a safe place. Uh, keep an eye. Uh, uh, give give a shout if if you see him uh, become too agitated. No, run, no, no, I, I can help. If you are put my hand on his shoulder. Yep. Rest, Avery. Soon. No. Soon. I have to cast the spells. I have to cast me. Oh, maybe you should keep him near us because I am a good healer and I can help him if needed. Once the heroes arise, there will not be a threat in Bostera that they couldn't stand against. Just hold them off. This is good. And they, they go running back into this weird space. At this point in time, I'm going to roll initiative because things are flicking around and getting closer. Sounds good. I'm going to read through these class abilities and feats and stuff again, see if I remember how to shoot an arrow or two. <laughs> oh my god, there's so many new things on here, too. <laughs> I'm going to death ward you before you, before you uh, uh, move off to a vantage point. Yep. Roll some random numbers. That looks random to me. I see the darkness cannot harm your faithful. And touch Gracchus with both hands. Was Tech a dreamer? Tech was Tech remember not a dreamer. Not a dreamer? Okay. Tech was a guard. Te out, yeah. Tech's not here right now. Okay. Okay. Tech's not here, man. <laughs> he's 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 at one of the other doors knocking and announcing himself as tech. <laughs> yeah, tech's not here, man. <laughs> Delightful. All right, Flint. Um, you could you could hear things whipping around. They haven't quite made themselves um, visible yet. It, it it's it sound it feels like they're like flying around the top of the uh, the house of the moon or circling. Okay. Um, I'll step back outside. So I guess it's one move action, right? Yeah. I'll just he'll slowly walk outside and as he does the earth just starts to like absorb up his legs and up his body as he's gathering the earth around him sweet and he'll like look around outside and it starts to coalesce in his hands can right. you see anything from outside yeah give me a perception check yeah i don't have these guys uh automated makes sense what is my perception? 21. Oh, sweet. I forgot I had 26. 
26. Uh, you can see something that looks like it's a man on fire <laughs> that is walking towards the temple, maybe about 200 feet away, kind of in the desert haze. Let's see. Uh, 200 feet from you. Okay, it's somewhere around the middle here. It looks like... It looks like it was actually climbing out of the ground. It's not the thing that's making out the horrible sh screaming noise. Oh, no. And now that it's out of the ground, it's now screaming along with them. But it, the screams from it are much more like crackling and uh, garbled. But it's joined this horrible chorus of nightmares. Uh, more than 120 feet, you said? Uh, yeah, it is a uh, 200 feet away. Let me just move it 200 feet. Okay. Um, I will... There are a bunch of stones that were out here. Uh, they might have been grave markers or something. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I'm going to test to see how smart it is. And I'm going to conjure a wall between me and it, because it looks intimidating. Okay. Your walls are just rock? Yeah. So you create a wall of churning elements, funcing debris and roiling energy. It appears within 30 feet and can be up to 10 feet high and up to 120 feet long, or 20 feet high and 60 feet long. So I'm just going to put a 20 foot high, 60 foot long line... Right here. Oh, oh my god, I'm so excited to see this rock guy. <laughs> and I'm just going to put up a wall of, uh, gonna point, of rock. Gonna point it's just where? like churning. Oh, sorry. Uh, pointer tool. It's like. He, oh, do I have to. Is there a template I can use? Yeah, uh, you said 60 feet long and. 60 feet long, 30 feet away from me. So, like, yeah, like something like that. Okay. That's perfect. All right, so there's <laughs> there's a bunch of earth that does it block sight or does it? Uh, can you see through it? Uh, it's not completely solid, but it does provide cover against attacks from the other side of the wall. Okay, you can still see the flaming thing, um, man thing that rose from the rocks. Uh, it's it's screeching and howling a little bit, but the the main chorus of torment seems to be still flying around the top of the uh, of the house of the moon um and then there's the rumble of the of your rock wall your trusty rock wall and how many rounds does that last eight rounds eight rounds so rock wall yeah i have infusion specialization three so what i'll do is i'll spend that gathered power to i think maximize it you had enough actions to do that yeah Okay. It's just one for gather power and then the regular one to cast it as a wall. All right. The burning thing is moving forward. It spends one of its actions removing itself from the earth and then begins to fly forward. It's flying about five, ten feet off the ground at this point and then flies forward again. By the time it reaches here, it is now um i'm gonna move it back a little bit it's gaining some height to go over your wall okay it looks like a admits a swirling cloud of desiccated ashes is the vague shape of a human um like an like an undead human skeleton that is on fire its That's eyes awful. flicker its eyes flicker like dying embers and while this guy is um um flying there are two more that are pulling themselves from from that rocky outcropping and their actions are to come out of the earth or into this place and is there like an obvious source emanating from these rocks or it's just kind of like whoa there's just randomly uh, there's, a, there's cool a cluster of uh wind-worn rocks that could be grave 
the could be okay. uh, could be great. Uh, okay. Maybe yeah. Okay. Uh, the tortured souls are now flying around, and you can see one of them as it's whipping around uh, the house of the moon. Um, it looks very, very angry and threatening. And they are large. Let's make them large. It flies in a half circle as one of its moves. It's about 40 feet off the ground. It points at the opening of the temple and screams almost in an accus uh, in like an accusatory way. It's not really saying anything. Uh, the sinister figure appears to be inside of like a long black shroud, a hooded robe. There is a perhaps dead thing with a long with long wickedly curved claws. Uh, everything about it screams death. He did speak in um, a multitude of tongues, as if maybe there are other souls or tormented things living within the robes. Uh, you did understand, uh, I don't know if you speak Bastani. Celestial common Terran. Yeah, so probably the common tongue was one of the languages. <laughs> You'll have to be more specific. It does not like your answer. <laughs> I don't know who he is, so... And it will... I don't know. How long can you do that at range? Let's see. Yeah, you can do it at range. I need a fortitude save, Flint. As you talk back to the thing, it is smart. It interacts with people. You have to be boss of the surface. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't like your answer and is going to try to render you mute. Oh, sorry, deaf. Uh, uh, okay. Fortitude save. Is, is that a necromancy spell? Uh, it is a necromancy power, yeah. Sick. Plus two. Shh. It shushes you. Thirty-three. Uh, yeah, you, you, your, your eardrums pop. They bleed a little bit, but uh, no, no uh, game effect. He turns his head to the side. Uh, there are other screamers up there. You, like you think there might be one, maybe two more of them uh, flying around in the sky around the, uh, uh, around the house of the moon. Okay. Avery. Oh. Do we want to be outside? I can cast me. Spell. Inside seems safer. We will hold this door until until the dreamers awaken. You said you want to be on the roof, right? That's what Avery says. Hmm. Don't worry about me. Just start blasting them. Okay. Oh. Uh, Avery goes to the doorway. And he begins to cast a fireball. But something weird happens. He pours into his own fireball and turns into a fireball, <laughs> which then goes out up into the air to attack the uh, the reaver um, and explodes. Let's see. Do these things have SR? And he casts detonate. He kills himself. Um, a nimbus of fire explodes all around this creature. He then shrinks back down to a uh, like a pea-shaped thing, and is now just hovering next to the uh, um, to the tortured soul. It waves a bony hand at him, and he's just he's just there, like he's ready to explode again, maybe. Uh, so he moved. He casts a spell. I think he's done all right something something's wrong with avery spell casting you've never seen him do this type of thing 
You said our spells have recovered, right? Yep. <clears throat> yeah, right now Avery is a tiny nimbus of fire. That's pretty cool. Uh, the fire seemed to wash up against the uh, the tortured soul thing. Gracchus, what are you doing? Uh, I think... Ha has Darshan gone yet? I'm delaying until after Darshan. Uh, okay, until after Darshan? Sure. Because yeah. uh, you haven't cast the... I don't yet. think I've been able to cast it yet. No, no. Okay. Yeah, I'm delaying. Okay, Darshan? I cast um, Death Ward. On Gracchus. Okay. Uh, Girding his soul against horrible things. The darkness cannot harm your faithful. I say as I touch him. Okay, Gracchus. This might be a new trick. Although... First round, so, like, two, two actions. I, I, can, I, the, the, I can move or standard on the first round probably translates into... Uh, Two actions? Right? No, we're, we, there was no surprise. You heard them coming, and oh, I know. Yeah. In the first round of combat, I'm stunned. Oh, um, <laughs> staggered or stunned? Uh, staggered. Sta which means you have two actions in the first round of combat. Yeah. So you yeah, cast, so cast a spell. You, you cast a spell, and you're done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Gracchus. Uh, spell casting's two actions. Uh, I am going to use a standard to wild shape as a druid into beast shape two uh i sent you a token in chat marty uh is there some sort of i'm trying to turn into burr before burr became an anthropomorphic or not even anthropomorphic before he became an owl bear he was just like an owl we found in a tree at one point i think frozen okay. in a tree uh i'm gonna turn into that i think he was maybe a tiny thing when we found him and i will use my 60 feet good maneuverability of fly uh i will do two actions of that to fly out and up i think uh, b shape is a standard unless you have yes a... b shape is a standard isn't standard one action in the action economy two Oh, standard suit. Then yeah, I'll I'll fly sixty feet out and up. Okay, so you're twenty feet out. Um, we're gonna say that you you you're at a plateau of the building. You're just not. You're at the next to the dome that is uh, that is in the center of it. Can I? Did I end up over some floor or am yeah, I? Yeah, you could you could you could there? you could transform and stand up here. Um, the dome might be tricky to stand on. Uh, you're also not at the top of the dome yet. But you can see that there are two other creatures flying around. You've got a better vantage point. And uh, mm -hmm. one of them is also screaming. This one almost like uncontrollably. And it seems like it's got a trail of souls in and amongst its um, um, cowls. And then there's one that is a little bit further back. And it just seems to be watching. It's not screaming. It's not flying around. Okay, you talk about Soul Reaver One's watching. Soul Reaver Two is flying around making noise. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean that. That's that's me. Okay, trying to get some height. Uh, Flint. Apparently, uh, you were not the only one looking for adventurers. Yeah. All right. Well, he doesn't want to say anything. He's not being very nice. So <clears throat> I'm going to throw a big hunk of metal at him. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to gather power again. And this time as the earth comes up, he just kind of condenses it. And it, and it sort of forges it into a chunk of like iron, of raw spiky iron, um, and chucks it at him. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be a uh, metal composite blast. And I'm going to use my magnetic infusion, which is a substance infusion. 
and I think he's more than 30 feet away, so I need to use extended range as a form infusion, but I should be, he's more than, he's within 120, so I'll be okay. So between the two form infusions, that's three burn, but I have infusion specialization three, so it's fine, and gather power for the, um, for the composite blast. So I am good, no burn. Uh, and I will roll out an attack. Does a 27 hit? Uh, this thing has an AC of 29. A touch or? No, no. these are against physical. Yeah, it, it swats at your, your composite blast and, and the, blast, uh, the blast goes scattering and flying. It tilts his head again. That's it. Okay, um, I'm adding Crojan and Tech to the initiative. All right, that was Flint. Cinder somethings. Okay. Oh, you're the only... There are two of you that have gone out. What are my senses? Dark vision. It flies over your wall, but drops down beside you. Um, it, it's on fire, but it looks like it's transparent. Mm -hmm. And it's going to try to touch you. 15 touch AC. No. No? Okay. Uh, it'll Just try to touch you leans. again. Yeah, this is... <laughs> uh, 25 touch AC. Leans back. Okay, the stone man has got some moves. It appears that he's dodging Ooh. and weaving and, and um, um, is able to keep this thing occupied. These two that raised up are going to come flying in. 160 brings them to here. Uh, next person to go is Tech. Tech is coming back from a hunt. He didn't know when people were going to start waking up. And he could see he could see and hear bad things. <laughs> What's Tech's movement rate, Matt? Ah, yes. Tech is... Let's see. Characters. Tech... Fifty speed fifty, and he does he have run feet or? Um, I don't remember anything about those types of feats. I know Tech jumps really far. Yeah, yeah, he does jump like crazy. He jumps incredibly far. Uh... Natural leaper. Not leper, leaper. Nothing specific okay. on that. Endurance, various other things. Yeah. So he's gonna full out run. Get a better look at what's going on. Crojan, uh, Crojan, last round. I don't know whatever buffing he could have done last round. He did last round. He probably drank a mutagen. Drank a mutagen. Okay. Yeah. And then moved to the door. All right. He's ready to. He's ready to step out. Is the... It looks like the... What's his name is in the way of his charge, yeah? Uh, okay, let me let me put the, the, truth speaker. The, the temple. So we'll say... I'm going to add the temple to the initiative. Uh, Askrin... Or sorry. Um, Akram started a, an encouraging bard song. What's the bonus on that? Uh, his is plus two. And he did that last round. And then this warrior backed away, firing an arrow at the thing that was flying, and his arrow went right through the, the flaming thing. No, you could you could charge. Um... Yeah, he'll do that. He's going to rage. In addition to, he drank the mutagen last round. So this will be a raging power attack. And... Uh... I 
it. Sorry, it's been a while since I played Crojan. I want to make sure. I don't think he gets his sneak on. I think he needs to flank for that. So I'll make sure that that's off. Okay. Uh, so this will be two claws. Natural attacks is how, how do you do the natural attacks on like for someone who has pounce in three action system again? You you'd get all of them. Okay. So if you had a bite claw claw, you get bite claw claw all at highest bab. Um. All right. This is. Bite claw claw for uh, plus twenty six. Uh, forty six, forty four. Oh, the first one's a net twenty. You want to? Do you want to crit for that? Can they be crit? No, the they cannot. Okay. Um, thirty five, forty four, forty six. Do any of those hit? Uh, yeah, this thing's got an AC of 20. Oh, okay. Well, this thing is going to be hurting. Bite. And claw claws the same. Okay. 35, 35, 39. Alright, uh, your claws are magical? They are. They're plus two claws. Okay, each with each swipe, you are you. It's almost like you're getting handfuls of ashes, uh, and burning cinders. Um, you don't have ghost touch or anything like that. No. Okay, so that turns out to fifty-four damage total. Okay. And Scrooge, um, it just pounces like one big cat leap. About half of its essence are, is gone. Uh, just ashes. And cinders being uh, being thrown around everywhere. Are you protected against fire at all? You are taking some damage while um, striking this with your open hands. He has resist fire three. Okay, I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one. Yeah, it would be this. So three at one d six minus three. So you take no damage. <laughs> He's able Sweet. to pull his claws and back quick enough to not eat the burning cinders uh, while, while at the same time um, uh, attacking it. Uh, Flint, you feel this this big Brickostan rage behind you as claws are uh, uh, slashing out above your head, um, tangling with this fiery ghost thing. I may have found my heroes. <laughs> oh, just wait. I know what they are. These are the ghosts of those who are eaten by Cindermar. Oh, interesting. <laughs> what are they doing here? Um, that's Akram, uh, Crojan, Tortured Souls. Okay. Uh, this thing that is demanding to know where is he um, swats at the little pea-shaped fireball thing and is kind of ignoring Avery. Um, rising up from the ground, like made from the bones of like little birds and lizards and, and like dead things, they come rolling very quick from some nether realm or from the, uh, or from the vicinity uh, into a massive scythe. Uh, it floats down as its weapon is formed. And it's going to... Ooh. I think uh, cleave or attempt to. It's going to cleave through Crojan and Flint in that order. Okay. Ah, AC 30. AC 30 will hit. Okay, it wasn't a critical, so the necromantic energy on the on the uh, scythe does not um, attack Crojan's soul. Does that hit Flint? No. Okay, so Flint ducks, Crojan gets hit. Uh, 
and he takes 25 damage, uh, three of which is uh, negative energy. All right, that was a standard action and a move. So it's done. Uh, this one. Fly over. He's got a slightly different pitch, but uh, the question remains the same. Uh, it's also forming a scythe in a similar way, but it isn't close enough to anyone to attack. Uh, this third one is floating right above the center of the temple, dangerously close to you, Gracchus. And it's just looking down into the into the temple like a cat looking inside of a fishbowl. It seems to be seeing into the temple where you cannot see through the roof. It is not screaming. Avery blows up not once but twice. <laughs> Uh, both times cracking their SR. Nice. Very nice. Alright, these things have reflexes. 2 at 1d20 plus 15. Uh, one of them made it, one of them failed. Uh, they have much more, how should we say, material to them. They are not incorporeal. And they are not immune to fire. Okay. Ooh, sucks to be them. Oh, that was the first fireball. And the second fireball. Uh, Avery's probably got, what? Near DC 24s for his fireball? Uh, Avery, let's see, where is spells, uh, DC 20 plus spell level. Three, and then he's probably got evocation specialization. We'll assume, we'll assume it's 25 for now. Looks like three saves, uh, one fail. So let's do some maths. Uh, that would be 16 plus... Thirty-two damage on this guy, and forty-eight damage on the other. Uh, Avery then realizes that he's off the ground when he reforms, uh, and he feather falls himself back to the ground. <laughs> I, I, I cast it! He's sizzling and, and looks like he, like, was the fireball. Um, Darshan. Um, Darshan will move. Let's see what we're looking at here. That's 30 feet away. He was here. I got sent Sam. Where is he? Uh, Darshan will let's let's just do a single will channel energy to harm undead. This radiant flash of <laughs> of brilliance. Do you have anything? Ah, do you have the light? Do you have anything that um, affects your channels, Darsh? Uh, I do. I'm. I've got um, a phylactery of uh, uh, positive channeling, so I'm doing eight d six channels. DC is let's see, ten plus seventeen plus. DC's 23. Okay. I 
don't think I have anything else that underscore the underscore boosts the channeling or increases the DCs. Prime. I'm back, baby. <laughs> we just got uh, Luke's uh, sub. Okay, um, when you when you begin to tap into positive energy, Darshan, 